Most people only know mesothelioma from commercials in the afternoon. If you have mesothelioma or have been exposed to asbestos, you can trust that the local lawyers of Marcel and Bickford know you're right. It's not about that. It's, it's about real innocent people dying, and it's a horrible, painful death. It's, it's hard not to be upset with the companies that manufacture asbestos products because they knew what it did. They knew it caused cancer, they knew it killed people, and, and yet they kept it because of money, because they're making money hand over fist with it. Oh, it's a great product. No, it'll fireproof this. I was nine years old when I was exposed. Nine. How is that fair? So yeah, I'm mad. Usually people live maximum 18 months after a diagnosis. I just had a baby. I mean, I, I wanted to see her raised. I, 18 months was not, <laughs> that wasn't an option. After I had Lily, I started losing weight, like five pounds a week. Noticeably gaunt, very, very pale. Then I started getting tired. And then I felt like a truck parked on my chest and I couldn't take a deep breath. We did a chest x-ray to make sure it wasn't like an enlarged heart or a heart virus, and that's when they found the fluid. I had over a liter of fluid around my left lung. So we went and had a CT scan, and that's when they found the mass. The mass was in the lower left portion of my lung. And I'll never forget this, so I was thinking, okay, I have lung cancer? And he said, you have a cancer called mesothelioma. The cancer is in the lining of your lung, the mesothelium. And my husband said, oh, this is bad. And I'm like, wow. He goes, it's a cancer most often associated with asbestos. He goes, when were you exposed to asbestos? My dad worked construction and was also a firefighter. His jacket, I remember, would be white, dusty. His shoes would be white and crusty, but it was from all the drywall dust. Patients inhale asbestos at some point. Some 15 to 40 years later, those fibers are sticking out of the surface of the lung. And I would put that coat on to go outside and feed our rabbits. We had rabbits and I wouldn't want to wear my coat. God forbid I got it dirty, so I'd wear my dad's dirty coat. For those 40 years as patients breathe, they irritate the opposite lining in the chest. And over a period of time, this malignancy forms mesothelioma. It was just dust. It wasn't anything dangerous. It was just, that's what my dad did for a living. This tumor is relentless in its attack on the patient locally, around the lungs and the heart. He gave us good, better, and best. Goes best, you can go see Dr. David Sugarbaker in Boston. He's the world's leading specialist in the disease. And if you want to live more than 15 months, that's where you need to go. Without batting an eye, my husband said, get us to Boston. And there we were 12 days later. There are basically two types of surgery. One is the peeling of the tumor off the lung leaving the lung in place, intact. He was the first person we saw in the hospital. And the other is to remove the lung, the diaphragm, and the covering on the heart, such that the patient is living on their remaining lung. He will tell you what is and what's not, and I appreciate that. When you're messing with cancer, you don't want somebody filling you full of crap. It's a very long surgery, minimum seven hours. When they go in, they cut you from here to underneath your shoulder blade in the back. They take out the sixth rib so the doctor can get in, and they cut out the pleura, the lining of the lung, the entire lung, the left half of the diaphragm, and then where the tumor was down here, then they can do what they call the shake and bake. <laughs> Over the last decade, we've added a chemotherapy wash or lavage. It did something to the nerve, so my left hand is, it twitches and it does weird things, and it's noticeably weaker. I can't go back to work because of that. I was a hairdresser. I mean, imagine losing what you love to do and never being able to do it again. I'm still on pain pills six years later, probably will be for the rest of my life. I have to take an anti-nausea drug because radiation did a number on my stomach and I have to use an inhaler. My law firm did like a analysis of my career losses since I was diagnosed so young something like four and a half million dollars in income that I, I can't recoup. <laughs> Did I have any legal recourse? Why not try? I had nothing to lose. Did it replace all that I lost? Hell no. 
Lily's school is paid for. We've got savings. My husband still works full time. You know, it's taken off a lot of responsibility of where's the next house payment gonna come from? We were able to pay off our house. Well, for instance, in Heather Vaughn St. James, who had a lung removed. Six years, February 2nd was six years. You can tell she lives a relatively normal life. She's active, uh, she's able to carry on the, the daily living tasks that we all do. I'm not gonna go running any marathons, but I wouldn't have done that before cancer anyway, so. You know, one thing they all realize, and that is when hope is part of the equation, anything is possible. And what mesothelioma patients have now that they didn't have 20 years ago is they have hope. People think mesothelioma, asbestos disease, they think old men in the Navy, or they think, you know, plumbers or people. Not that that makes it any better, but this is, this is who's being diagnosed now, or are young women, because there are hundreds of us out there, if not thousands. One of the things that isn't well understood is that asbestos isn't actually illegal in the United States. Asbestos is commonly thought of as being a single substance or a single entity, but it's actually a name for a whole family of substances that have somewhat related properties. 